last season, Amos faced his trauma. Like this was his season to get his trauma out of the way. And he also got some redemption and he found Clarissa. Now, is this season where Clarissa gets her chance to make amends? I mean, Clarissa has been on such a long journey and it's definitely a shift in focus from so much um, shame and guilt and just giving up to a place of hope and to of possible family and tribe and friendship. Your presence actually, in a way, bookended the show because your character's sister was the protomocule catalyst and everything that happened with your dad. I think, you know, it's really all about them trusting Amos as much as they do, though, uh, um, for them to allow Amos to bring Clarissa on board. And then she's just really keeping her head down, working as hard as possible, trying to earn that trust back because it's, it's going to take some work. Now, how does Amos help that? Because Amos is very cut and dry. Amos doesn't have a gray area. He doesn't know that color. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I think what, uh, you know, I think that Amos saw a vulnerability in Clarissa. And when they were, tra when they were transporting her back to earth, she came down to work in the machine shop and they really, and he really got to know her. And what he really understood about Clarissa is that there was never any malice or there was not, she wasn't doing anything because she was evil. She was doing it because she was confused and she had this misguided love, um, uh, this misguided loyal sense of loyalty and love and need of approval of this, of the, of a sociopath, you know? And so ultimately it, he kind of felt as if that he should be the mentor to her that he had in his life with Lydia and Naomi and going into Holden. And so it was important to him because he made this promise and you can see it in season five when she, when Lydia said, promise me that you try to be a better person, that you try to be this thing. And he saw this opportunity. He, this is his way of honoring what Lydia was to him. And that meant he knew the, he knew that the Rossi crew would agree, would agree with him over time, that, that mm -hmm. they would see that this is the right thing to do. He might've had to wedge it in there a little bit to get him in there, but he knew that this was the right thing. And this was one of the first times where he was clear, this is what needs to happen. This is the right thing. We need to take care of her. Now he does go into the season very clear, but does he stay there? Well, I think because of the love and the loyalty that he has for the crew, and now that he's been starting to awaken in a lot of ways by being a mentor with Peaches and, and she's kind of under his, you know, he's, he's kind of looking out for her. He's really starting to question there's no question of loyalty to Holden. There's no question of uh, what, how he feels about Holden, but there is a question of like, wait a minute, what's motivating Holden? Is this really some sense of him wanting to do the right thing? Or is this, is there psychologically some sort of guilt or something, this Don Quixote mission that is driving and pulling us into this, you know, really dangerous situations where none of us are profiting and nothing good is coming out of it. And is he, is he as reliable as I once thought he was? Like, what is really motivating him? And he says throughout the thing over and over, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why, why, do we in, why are we in the middle of this? Why are we not hiding out somewhere, you know, uh, waiting, let everybody kill everybody and then we'll come back. Why do we got to be in the center of the storm? Yeah, I mean, even in the trailer, he, you know, he says to Bobby, are you getting paid? Who's getting paid? Why are we doing this? <laughs> Why are we doing this? What's going on? You're not getting paid? This season actually really gets nuts. Um, like, I've seen all six episodes. And I still haven't recovered. It felt like an action movie every single episode. What was it like shooting all that in the middle of the pandemic? That season was really hard because there's so much isolation and we're just respecting everyone's boundaries and safeties. And there's a ton of protocols. So we'd go to set and it would look like um, outbreak or contagion, you know? And so, and then you can't really jive with people like you normally would in a creative environment um, on set. So it was, it was really hard, the isolation and the work. But I mean, we just kept reminding ourselves how lucky we are to be working, how how grateful we are to be able to keep telling the story and to to really wrap up this show. Um, it really got us through it. And, and yeah, we were really grateful. Season six was tricky in a lot of ways, but not only did we, you know, one of the things that I love most about these fans is all the people. You know, we've, we've gotten so, it's like a family to me. We've gotten so close over the years. We have 90% of the same crew. So showing up, knowing that it's the last scene and just wanting to be together because we have, I mean, we hang out 
and when we we're in Toronto the whole time and we we're going out and dinners and, and we're just wanting to be together, but being separated and being confined. So you're still in the same city. You're still shooting the show, which we normally do, but then knowing it's our last time and really just wanting to hang out and be together and having that uh, being separated from it, there was a sense of sadness and a sense of it, it was in the winter, it's in the middle of COVID. You see that everything that people are going through and we're shooting this. So there was a melancholy that I think uh, that was in the atmosphere. And I think that came across on screen as we're shooting it because essentially it was a war movie. This is, you know, you're starting out and you're picking up. We've been in the middle of a war for, for a while now and we're exhausted and we're beat up and we're, you know, trying to, to hold this whole thing together, which was basically what it was like on Offset as well. And I got to ask in terms of the war, um, how badly did you want Bobby's halo suit? Like <laughs> when, she, when she came in like Master Chief, I was like, wait. Are you asking from the character standpoint? Because, yours, yours. Okay, so the short answer is I didn't want anything to do with that, with her suit, because at the, because at the end of the, the amount of pain and suffering that she goes through with that big old giant suit on and how uncomfortable it is for her. And then she has this like membrane that goes under the suit, which is basically like a sauna suit. And then she puts this thing on and it takes her, you know, 45 minutes just to oh. get the armor on. And then she's running in this big cumbersome suit. And, you know, there, there was a scene, uh, I, I can't give too much away, but there's a scene where I'm putting her on her back and just the amount of how, all, like she was trying to, <laughs> she's trying to lay down and just the, how disproportionate the weight is that putting that tension on her back. So I don't want anything to do with that suit. <laughs> she can keep that suit. Thank you both so much. It's a great season. I'm going to miss this show so much, but I am putting it out there that we're getting a movie or a series or something else. So thank you so much.